Welcome back to the movie recap. Today's movie will be a 2019 Japanese historical film titled The Great War of Archimedes. So sit back, relax and enjoy the video. The movie begins with a battle between a Japanese naval warship and a fleet of enemy aircraft. The Japanese fight with their all from their ship while enemy planes drop bombs towards the ship, causing many fatalities. As the Japanese soldiers are traumatized by seeing their dead comrades, they continue to press on in the fight. Still, the enemy seems to have the upper hand. Enemy aircraft keep targeting the ship until it is turned on its side. Eventually, the bombs give way to explosions, sinking the ship. Captain Isoroku Yamamoto and his crew launch a few aircraft in an aircraft carrier. Ecstatic, the soldiers celebrate the successful launches and talk about a future battleship in the making. When Yamamoto hears this, he becomes distasteful and tells the group how useless battleships will be at war. Instead, he talks about aircraft and aircraft carriers as the primary vessels for future battles. When Yamamoto returns to his room, he is presented with a model aircraft carrier by Fujioka, a naval architect. Yamamoto inspects it thoroughly and is pleased with its design. Next, he talks to Fujioka about possible wars and the necessary budget they would need in the worst-case scenario. Both men and Asami Nagano, Admiral of the Japanese Navy, attend a meeting with Shigetaro Shimada, his architect, Tatamaiki Hirayama, and the minister. Yamamoto explains to the men that battleships are not as effective as they used to be and that they should focus on replacing the ships with carriers. Shimada, prideful and stubborn, defends his ideal battleship and says that they should follow the traditional way of battle. Ideas and debates pass from each side until the argument becomes heated. Hirayama interrupts them and proposes his idea of building a new, massive battleship. When he presents the model, the minister looks at it with awe. Hirayama tells them that it will symbolize the dignity and power of the Imperial Japanese Navy. The minister praises him respectfully, disregarding Yamamoto's idea of turning to carriers. At a Geiko district, Yamamoto, Fujioka, and Nagano drink to their delight and call for geishas. However, they make their way to him when they're told that a man has taken all the geishas. They come into the room to see Tadashi Kai, a student, measuring the busts of the geishas. They ask him for some women, but he declines, telling them he hates the military. Then, ignoring the navy soldiers, Kai turns his attention back to the geishas. While Yamamoto tries to make conversation, Kai indulges himself in his calculations. He quickly does a few measures and asks a geisha to throw a fan. When it lands on a stool, the geishas become astonished as Kai explains the fan's trajectory and his formulas. When he sees that Yamamoto is still there, he talks about his previous job as a tutor to the Ozaki household. He tells them he was expelled because he angered Tomi Kichi Ozaki, the man who hired him. He gets up and asks them to leave. Then, he quickly calculates the money he spent on the geishas, and the soldiers notice his talent. Kai replies and says that he studied math at Tokyo University. Going back to their room, Yamamoto tells the group that he noticed something suspicious about the estimates about Hirayama's ship. He tells them that the estimated funds for Hirayama's ship don't make sense. He points out that it's too low of an estimate for such a big ship. The trio agrees that there's something wrong with Hirayama's estimates. Yamamoto suggests that they do a re-estimation of Hirayama's proposal. Fujioka refuses to do it, saying it's impossible to do it in two weeks. In Yamamoto's office the following day, 2nd Lieutenant Shojiro Tanaka confirms Kai's identity. When Yamamoto hears the legitimacy of Kai's math skills, he plans on going to Kai's place. However, Tanaka opposes the idea, saying Kai has a lousy reputation for touching Ozaki's daughter, Kyoko Ozaki. Nevertheless, Tanaka goes with Yamamoto to Kai's place. When they enter his house, they explain their plan to Kai to withdraw Hirayama's proposal. They ask for his assistance in calculating the estimates, which he declines. He shows them his ticket to America and reiterates his hate towards the military. When Yamamoto brings up the possibility of war, Kai becomes dumbfounded and tells them they can't win against America. Yamamoto uses this to his advantage and tells Kai that it is all the more urgent that they stop the proposal. After all their persuasion, Kai is still determined to leave Japan and tells them to leave. When they do, Yamamoto remains hopeful that he will eventually change his mind. Kai boards the ship and tries to stop himself from hesitating. He also comprehends the military's uselessness and admits to himself that there will be a war. Suddenly, he imagines how Japan would be if the war were to happen. He imagines people on fire and buildings destroyed. Before he knows it, he runs back down off the ship. He sees Kyoko, and the atmosphere suddenly turns awkward. And so he reassured her that it wasn't her fault he got expelled. But when Kyoko says she'll try to convince her father, Kai yells out that it's impossible and will only worsen the situation. He then becomes frustrated when he doesn't know where to go. He thinks he should be going to America, 
But when he imagines Kyoko in a bombed up Japan, he can't bring himself to board the ship. In the end, he meets up with Tanaka and a pleased Yamamoto. Yamamoto briefs him on his task and gives him the title of lieutenant commander. Kai gets taken aback by the title and gets suspicious. Yamamoto explains that ranks are the most crucial thing in the navy regarding absolute authority. He tells Kai that it will be helpful to him to have the title, and Tanaka is tasked with helping him. After meeting Nagano, he is escorted by Tanaka to an office Yamamoto has readied for Kai. On their way there, he gets chastised by Hiramiya after failing to salute him. Tanaka defends him while Hirayama questions his ethics. They brush off the encounter when he leaves and continues making their way to Kai's office. When they reach the office, Kai asks for the Hirayama proposal. He gets frustrated when Tanaka gives him a few pieces of paper and explains that they only have a copy of some parts of the proposal. And so he asks for the original papers, but Tanaka says it's classified. Knowing that he can't estimate the ship with only a few papers, he goes to the document's office. Still, they end up leaving the office empty-handed. Shimada calls Hirayama, telling him about Kai's attempt to get the original papers. Shimada visibly worries about their estimates, but Hirayama reassures him that all will be well. Hirayama tells Shimada that it's nearly impossible for anyone to do all the cost estimates within two weeks. Leaving the building, Kai asks Tanaka to drive him to see an actual battleship. Knowing that he won't get to have the original papers, Kai explains that he will need to measure a battleship on his own to get an idea of how Hirayama's ship will be. Moments later, Tanaka drives him to a port, where a nearby ship called Nagato is located. Seeing the ship, he becomes excited and tells Tanaka to find a way to enter the ship immediately. Even as he opposes, Tanaka does what he's asked and finds a small boat they can use to approach the ship. As they enter, the captain of the ship shows them their room. When the two are left alone, Kai immediately searches for the blueprints for Nagato. Tanaka again opposes, telling him that they are classified, but when he explains that he needs them, he gives way and tells him there might be papers in their room. Finally, the duo agrees that Tanaka will distract the captain while Kai searches for the blueprints. Sure enough, the captain knocks on their door, and Tanaka takes the captain out of the room. When they leave, Kai goes through the cabinets for the blueprints. He eventually finds them and starts writing as much information as he can. As the captain and Tanaka make their way back to the room, Kai quickly inserts the blueprint in his belt at his back. The moment suddenly becomes tense as the captain approaches him. However, Kai is calm and relieved when the captain just fixes his uniform, not suspecting anything. The following day, he frantically measures the ship, and from afar, Shimada's spy scoffs as he watches Kai measure the ship. He fails to measure everything within a day but is glad when Tanaka gives him his findings. When they return to his office, he prepares to construct drawings of Nagato. He explains that he can use them as a basis for drawing Hirayama's ship. Tanaka gets surprised at how many books he read about drafting battleships. As Kai starts, Tanaka starts seeing the genius in him. During the evening, while Tanaka brings in dinner, he gets astounded by Kai's progress in drafting Nagato. After eating, both men get to work, and Kai prepares to draft the Hirayama ship. After a tiring night of work, Tanaka goes out to get breakfast and is baffled as he sees many papers on the door and walls with insults towards Kai. He quickly tries to take them down for his friend, but Kai opens the door and sees the slander-filled papers. When Nagano finds out about this, he becomes furious about such acts. Finally, Kai tells the truth that he and Kyoko shared feelings, but nothing more happened. He asks Nagano to ignore the matter, but Nagano turns his back on him. And so he returns to his office, frustrated at how he's lost an ally. Nonetheless, he continues drafting the ship, and when he finally finishes the drawing, he asks for a price list of cost figures. Tanaka suggests they go to a civilian shipyard. However, their efforts could have been more fruitful. Tanaka suspects that Hirayama pressured the people not to say anything about his ship. Later that day, he finds Kyoko walking down the street and pulls her aside to meet Kai, and she gladly agrees to meet him. Skipping the small talk, she asks him if he hates her, and Kai reassures her that he doesn't and genuinely loves measuring things and people. He tells her about his need for cost figure papers and asks if she's noticed anything in her father's work. She frowns and says that her father never brings work-related things home. And so he apologizes, thinking he is asking for too much while admitting that he wants to see her. When he's about to leave, she tells him that there's a person that can help him, Mr. Osato. She tells him he was fired from the Navy because he complained about her father. This information makes Kai ecstatic, and he thanks her for the helpful tip. When they travel and reach Osato's office, they ask him for help, unfortunately, he shuns them away. However, the duo persists and asks for his help at any chance they get. Osato tries to ignore them again, telling them about his unfair treatment by the military. 
When Kai brings up the possibility of an incoming war, it catches Osato's attention for a moment, but he ultimately leaves. They continue to linger around Osato's office, and Tanaka suggests that they go back to Tokyo since they've been wasting days trying to talk to Osato. Not knowing what to do, Kai eventually agrees when suddenly, Kyoko appears. She tells Kai that she wants to help by asking a man to lead her to Osato, and they finally have the meeting they've been waiting for. When Osato sees Kai's drawings, he becomes speechless at his skills. He gets thrown back at Kai's intelligence and agrees to help. Osato leads them to a storage room with hundreds of notebooks, where Kai becomes joyful that he's finally found the information he needs. Osato pulls the notebooks from the shelves and explains that they contain cost figures and other estimates from different ships. He estimates the cost for Hirayama's ship with no time to waste. Osato tells them that it would take at least a week to go through all the notebooks but gets surprised by Kai's quick mathematical computations. After a conversation about hidden orders and agreements, an unexpected letter arrives. Tanaka reads it and becomes dumbfounded. A curious Kai asks him to tell him what's in the letter, but Tanaka remains speechless. Finally, impatient, he gets the letter and reads that the meeting has been moved to the following morning at 11 when it should still be a week away. After a brief moment of chaotic thinking and uncertainty, he frantically lays down all the notebooks and starts reading them all at once. Then, he starts drawing figures and scribbling down numbers and proceeds to cut up his drawing of the ship while explaining his thoughts to the group. When he finally finishes, he, along with Tanaka and Kyoko, goes out to travel back to Tokyo. Mr. Osato commends his skill and perseverance and encourages him with his words. Kai thanked him, and the group left for Tokyo. On the train ride, Kai and Tanaka continue calculating the costs. As they arrive, they barge into the meeting and finish their calculations. As the meeting progresses, Yamamoto tells the rest of the men that the cost estimates for Hirayama's ship are too low to be able to support the entire build. When the minister is about to finalize his decision to choose Hirayama's ship, Kai interrupts him while quietly asking Tanaka to finish the calculations while he buys him time. He moves to the front, near a blackboard, and explains to the men how he was able to calculate the cost for Hirayama's ship. As he draws diagrams and writes different formulas, Shimada's spy, who is also in the conference, interrupts him and says that his information is unreasonable. Shimada asks him where he got the info for figure costs, but Kai doesn't reveal anything. He tells them that he can prove that he knows how to estimate the total cost of any ship correctly. Shimada takes on his challenge and asks his spy to grab notebooks about different ships. Surely enough, when Kai is asked to calculate a specific ship's total estimate, he gets the answer right each time. This shocks the entire conference and fuels Yamamoto with pride and excitement. When Tanaka finishes his calculations, he gives them to Kai. He reveals the actual cost estimate of the ship almost twice as much as what Hirayama has asked for. Arguments quickly spike up from the men, diverting attention to Kai's relationship with Kyoko. The sudden fuss leads to the minister asking them to be quiet, wherein Hirayama suddenly speaks up. He admits that his cost estimates are false and that Kai's estimates are correct. He calmly explains that he lied so he could fool the enemies into thinking they would build a small ship. Yamamoto, Nagano, and Fujioka remain indifferent, but when the minister hears Hirayama's explanation, he praises him, to everyone's surprise. Dumbfounded by the illogical thinking of the minister, Kai becomes speechless and numb. Finally, the minister finalizes his decision to go forward with Hirayama's battleship. However, when Kai sees the blueprints for Hirayama's ship, he finds something odd. He asks Tanaka to bring in his cutout drawings and tells everyone that the proposal has a flaw in its calculations. Finally, he draws a diagram on the blackboard, explaining that when the seas get rough, there is a high possibility that the ship will sink. Seeing his explanations and calculations, Hirayama withdraws his plans and accepts defeat. While Yamamoto rides with Nagano back, a flashback appears where he talks about the benefits of getting a new carrier. He had shared with Nagano further information on the enemy's base, Pearl Harbor. Kai meets up with Hirayama in a building where he's shown a bigger model of Hirayama's ship. Hirayama tries to persuade him to give him the formulas he used in his calculations, but Kai declines defensively. Finally, Hirayama explains that his ship is meant to serve one purpose only, to symbolize Japan and end the stubbornness of the Japanese population. Eventually, he is persuaded and ends up giving Hirayama his formulas. The movie ends with Hirayama's ship, Yamato, moving across the ocean to war. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.